Good evening. My name is Jim Meller. I work at the Columbus office with Stephanie and Bianca. Uh, it's right around the corner, if you don't know where it is, right up on 206. And I'm here to talk about uh, loans. We provide a type of supervised credit to the agricultural community, basically uh, uh, for farmers who are having difficulty getting commercial credit. When, that, when uh, their ability to get commercial credit fails, they come to us and uh, we help them out. We have several programs. Let's see what we have. Our uh, loan offices, we have three loan offices, one for North Jersey, Central Jersey, and South Jersey. It actually process loans. There's also three other offices, Frenchtown Freehold and, and uh, Woodstown. You can apply or you can go to any of those offices for loans or programs. We provide loans and they can be used to purchase land, livestock, feed, supplies, and construct buildings or make farm improvements. And pretty much anything to do with the farm or anything to do with the farm operation. The loans that we provide have to be fully secured, so they're not unsecured loans. We need some type of uh, collateral to back the loan. Uh, we look at all those things that I guess they were talking to you about before, balance sheets, income and expense statements, tax records, production records, sales records, um, expense records. We take that all into consideration. We filter all that information through our program. And uh, if it's a feasible loan, and that is if the income can pay for the expense and there's still uh, revenue left over, we add our loan payment to that revenue, and if you can still, uh, you're still above zero, let's say, the loan is feasible, and as long as all the eligibility requirements are met, uh, we're off and running. Uh, you have to operate your farm, and this is a part of the NRCS part, it's, this is also our part. You have to be environmentally compliant, erodible land. Uh, and, and operate according to a USDA land management plan if necessary, and that's, uh, that's on Bianca's side. The agency offers loans up to $300,000 directly through us, and that's what a direct loan is. The guaranteed loans are, are for amounts above 300000 we don't offer a guaranteed loan, we offer your lender a guarantee to make the loan more palatable for the lender. Uh, we offer operating loans, ownership loans. The direct down payment loan is a beginning farmer loan. It's a type of beginning farmer loan that we do alongside with commercial credit. We offer emergency loans. The emergency loans uh, primarily are to restore lost income from crop or uh, lost facilities due to storm. Uh, the president will designate a storm, Superstorm Standy and Irene. If they come through, they knock down the barn, they take out the crop, that's what the emergency loan is for. The emergency loan is unique in that we can loan up to a half a million dollars directly through the agency, but it only replaces what you lost. You can't, you can't come in and, and uh, uh, improve anything or we won't we won't allow you to build a barn twice as big as the one that fell down and so on yes I'm going to go into each one in a little bit of detail yes There's a test for credit requirement uh, to get a loan through the USDA. And generally speaking, that's exactly correct. We, um, we can process a loan for you if you cannot receive commercial credit. And I think the question was, do you need to go to a commercial lender and be denied? In most cases, you don't, and I'll tell you why. The uh, commercial lenders uh, there's only a, a small group of ag lenders commercially. Uh, most banks won't do a, an agricultural loan. There's only a few. And they put out standards for loans uh, for agriculture. And we can look at your financials when you come in 
and generally speaking when you come in to ask about a loan and we talk about your operation for a little bit uh, we can we can pretty much say one way or the other uh, whether you're going to get credit or not so we don't generally require it the only reason we would require it and let's say you had a business on the side or something and your financials look very good maybe maybe you're only farming ten or twenty thousand dollars but you have a machine shop on the farm and if machine shop generates three or four hundred thousand uh, dollars in that case when I was talking about the feasibility and the money that you have left over if you pay all your bills and you get all your income and after everything's said and done you have three hundred thousand dollars and you're sitting in front of me asking for fifty or a hundred thousand what we would do is ask you to go to a commercial lender at that point if you have that much funding they will they will provide a loan so uh, I would say I probably ask people to go to a commercial lender one out of 50 times maybe generally speaking you can you can see and most people that can get a commercial loan go there first anyway although some people do shop for rates and and terms with us we do get that a little bit uh, the micro loans are fifty thousand dollars or less the requirements are, are a little bit less the eligibility is a little bit less because the funding is a little bit less but it's it's uh, basically a beginner loan a micro loan it's up to fifty thousand dollars we require um, a year a, a year or cycle of farming or you can substitute that with education sometimes um, um, military leadership uh, there's a lot of different things we can look at with a micro loan to help you get started and I talked about the two guaranteed loans and they go through commercial lenders um, Stephanie may have mentioned that we work for the government there, this is this is a very small list of eligibility but it basically boils down to uh, your farming uh, you're not in any serious federal debt uh, basically that you're farming believe it or not that's that's really the biggest key we can probably get around some of the other stuff yes this isn't no it does not the definition of a family farm is is uh, operate the owner the operator is in one place uh, I don't rem I don't know that the exact uh, government definition but everything in Burlington County is a family farm uh, the way to look at a family farm is it's not a commercial farm you're not Archer Daniels Midland or something like that but most of the people we deal with are in fact entities corporations or LLC's you have to have a, a reasonably acceptable credit history you know and that's a case-by-case -case kind of thing uh, the delinquency on a federal debt is a is a deal killer there's a few other eligibility requirements but if you have been farming and you are farming uh, you're you're pretty far along as far as eligibility that's really where the uh, usually where the fallout occurs uh, somebody is working on a farm uh, that's not really management experience when people are telling you how to farm or go get the tractor or, or go out and plow the field or whatever we're really looking for some type of management experience and to get you on your way so sometimes like, like I said that could be education it can be something in your background um, the more money you would you want to borrow obviously the more uh, background we're looking for and we do that because we're looking for you to be successful we don't want to give you the money and and uh, you know somewhere down the road you realize this isn't really for you I really don't know what I'm doing uh, I can't really sell my product and you fail and now you're in default for the government and that government debt goes to the Treasury and and you know you're in a you're in a bad way you, you made a bad situation worse so we're trying to avoid that right up front and I was talking about the managerial ability the non-eligible enterprise is a big deal in New Jersey because there's uh, quite a few uh, uh, horse farms in New Jersey quite a few and uh, we have a saying in the agency it's food or fiber if you if you produce a food if you produce a fiber and a fiber would be for instance uh, sheep alpaca uh, llamas whatever it may be you're producing something on that farm uh, you're eligible a non-eligible enterprise is basically equine there's almost no equine in New Jersey draft horses would be the only thing that would be eligible so if you were farming hay on a horse farm 
you're basically ineligible because uh, that loan would uh, assist that horse farm and that horse farm's ineligible. That's a big deal. That's the biggest deal I can think of in New Jersey. I get probably one call a week for, for horse farms. Uh, the direct, this is the direct operating loan. Operating loans can be two different things. They can be an annual operating loan and that would be uh, seed, fertilizer, fuel, insurance, whatever, whatever money you expend in one year would be an annual operating loan. We would loan you the money, 12 months later you would give us the money back and the interest and the loan is done. It could be a term loan also, an operating loan could be for equipment, uh, it could be for a number of things. I don't know if they're up here, but it basically it's uh, operating loans are basically I think for equipment for the most part. And they would be termed out and they're usually termed out about seven years. Uh, we also have a small loans for minor farm improvements. That's a, it's like an ownership loan, substance. Uh, we work with NRCS. If, if you went to the Conservation Service and you had an issue on your farm, we could loan money to uh, promote the soil, promote some kind of conservation practice, and so on. This is basically what I was saying, 300000 directly from us, one to seven years. Installments are due annually every year. And the loan needs to be secured at 100%. Now, I say that, and a lot of people say, well, if I'm getting started, how am I going to how am I going to secure a $50,000 loan? And the way that normally works is uh, the beginning farmer comes in for equipment, twenty dollars or $30,000, whatever it is. I just made a loan to somebody, uh, four pieces of used equipment, $25,000. We take the equipment as collateral. So we'll hold the equipment as collateral. We put a lien on it. Uh, there's no additional asset necessary. If you had additional asset, we would take up to 150%. But it is possible uh, to borrow and, and uh, use that, whatever you purchase, as the collateral. Now, the operating loan obviously couldn't do that, but uh, with an equipment loan, you could. This is an ownership loan. Primarily, it's to buy land. Yes? Right now, the operating rate is two and a quarter and I think the ownership loan is three and a half they change monthly so it'll be changing again next week they vary just a little bit but usually they're right in that area okay. 2.125 to maybe 2.375 somewhere in that area you can enlarge your farm you can make improvements on a farm with an ownership loan now with an ownership loan, the requirements are different. I think there's a slide here that's that's the major difference between an ownership loan and an operating loan is the uh, eligibility requirements. The term for I said they were sh people would shop for loans, and that's why they're shopping for loans. We have a low interest rate, and we'll term that loan out for 40 years to try and keep that payment low. Um, installments are due once a year. They're basically the requirements are the same for each type of loan. The other difference with an operating loan, we're looking at the income that's generated by the operation. So, and let's just say you're a hay farmer, you got 40 acres of hay and you generate $20,000 in income a year. And you come in and you say, you know, now I'd like to buy that hay farm. And the hay farm's $450,000. Well, on the one side you have $20,000 in income and on the other side you have $450,000 in debt. That's not proportional. What they're looking for is if you're going to if you're going to spend a great deal of money on a farm or, or or a good piece of money on a farm that you're generating just about the income you need to support the farm and make the farm payment we really like to see the farm payment come from farm income and not from a part-time job or we call it non-farm income that's the other big difference uh, the, there's three types of loans, and I talked a little bit about the, the uh, down payment loan. Joint financing is a type of down payment loan. Uh, you would go to a commercial lender. You would get 300000 from them. You come to us, you get 300000 from us, and then you go out and you buy a $600,000 farm. That's joint financing. Down payment, uh, 
financing is uh, almost the same. The difference with down payment, it's only a beginning farmer loan, and we require 5% down. Uh, the agency will put up the other 45%, and the commercial lender puts up 50%. Normally, our loans do not require a down payment. Micro loans are always 50,000 or less, whether they're an operating loan, a direct loan, or a, or a farm ownership loan. They have the same basic authorized purposes as uh, a direct ownership loan. And I just talked about the down payment loan, only eligible to beginning farmers. It's a special type of loan. Applicants put 5% down, we finance 45% and it requires 50% participation from a commercial lender. Uh, emergency loans are the only category of loans that the agency offers that go up to $500,000. And that's only, and I, I think I mentioned that it's, it's based, it's the amount that you can borrow is based on your physical equipment or crop loss, your actual loss. You would present the loss to us, we funnel it through a system, and the system tells us how much you can borrow, and there you go. And there has to be a declared disaster, and right now there is one in New Jersey. I think it's pretty much the whole state. Question? No, you do not. You have eight months from the time we declare a disaster to file for an emergency loan. The loan would be through us. The, the disaster is usually funneled from the counties to the governor to Washington. And it's, it can be declared a couple different ways. The Secretary of Ag or the President can declare it. There's a few different kind of disaster declarations. But basically, it, it starts from us. We, we bring it up. We, re, we report the weather every week to our people in the state. and then. They, in turn, when they, when they realize a lot of farmers are in trouble from the weather, whatever it may be, they pass that to the governor, he passes it to Washington. And right now there's one, and there's a period of time. The, de the disasters are usually designated periods of time. So, for instance, the de disaster for Sandy was two days. So your losses had to occur in those two days, that's it. Uh, right now, uh, normally the disasters are for prolonged periods of heat, drought, uh, severe rain, may, there may be a two week uh, deluge of rain, whatever it is, but the disaster happens within that period. They declare the disaster, you have eight months from that, from that point to, uh, to apply for the emergency loan. Anyway, the micro loan is, is basically the same as the direct ownership loan, uh, operating loan, one to seven years, depending on what you want to use the money for. The guaranteed loans, we can only guarantee a loan up to 1.399 million. Uh, after that, you're on your own. Uh, we provide a 90% guarantee, so, it, and normally in New Jersey, property is gonna be reasonably expensive, so you go in, you don't have a lot of asset, you're, you're having difficulty farming or you're starting farming, whatever the case may be and the lender says, no, I, I'm not gonna lend you that, I can't lend you that money. And of course, the agency can only lend you up to 300,000, so what we do is we go behind the commercial lender and we guarantee that loan, we take that loss off their hands. You primarily deal only with the, with the lender. The lender is, is our client, you're the, the lender's client. And the use of the proceeds are all the same. That holds true for operating and, and ownership loans, 1.399, and there's the ownership loan. Basically the same. The ownership loan, the only difference is the term goes up to 40 years. And you can also refinance uh, some debts with ownership loans that are guaranteed where you can't with a direct ownership loan. This is how the agency defines a beginning farmer or rancher not operated for more than 10 years, that's probably the, the biggest one, and you certify that on the form that Stephanie was showing you earlier. 
Uh, the, and you can't own a farm greater than 30% of the median size of the farm in the county, and that's generally you're pretty safe there. It's probably defined. I thought the last time I saw the median size was about 100 acres. Could be more. Don't quote me on that. I don't have all, I don't have all those, those figures with me, yes? For this, I believe it's a county. Yeah, it's the county. So that would be Burlington. I would say somewhere around there, I think it is. And, that, and they would compare it to the, the farms in Burlington County. Was there another question? Yes. So does that mean you can't have a farm that's 30 acres? Or you can't have a farm that's 130 If the average farm was 100 acres, they would want you to have a 30 acre or less farm, <coughs> to be a beginning farmer. And again, that's kind of for your protection. A lot of people, they, they see a movie or they take a course and they think, you know, I'm going to farm, I really want to farm, and they, they want to go out and get 200 acres. It's a lot to manage. It's a lot to manage. And we're, we don't want to be the ones that are putting you in a situation where you're going to fail. We're trying to make sure that's successful. You really want to build that from the ground up. So if, the, if 100 acres was the case in Burlington, which I'm not sure it is, it would be 30 acres. Yes. The loan, the, the conditions for the loan have to be met to get the loan. Once you have the loan, that's the loan, that's it. And then you would worry about the next loan after that. But we have people with multiple loans. We have people that have four or five loans outstanding. One could be an emergency loan. They could have annual loans every year. Uh, uh, depending on the kind of operation, there's, a, there's a, a lot of input up front. And some people don't have that input in in February, let's say they have to put out $200,000 to get started. They come to us for money uh, fairly regular. We give them the money. It's annual money. They, they do their planting. They do their harvesting. They do their selling. And right around January or February, we get our money back. And then, then the whole cycle starts again. They could also have an emergency loan out. There's still quite a few emergency loans out for Sandy and Irene. They could have a, an ownership loan. They could, we could have bought the farm for them. We can still give them operating money. They're still eligible for emergency money. There, there is a restriction. I, I should say there is, there's, there is a restriction. At any given time, for the, for the type of loan that you have, there can't be more than $300,000 outstanding. You could have $250,000 operating loans, but no more. And as that principal gets paid down through annual payments, uh, that changes. So now maybe you only owe a hundred thousand dollars on two loans. You'd be eligible for two hundred thousand, and as you paid that down and so on. Um, yeah, but that I, oh, what I wanted to say was that's for each category of loan. So you could have three hundred thousand dollars outstanding for operating money. You could also have 300000 outstanding for ownership money. You could also have 500000 outstanding for emergency money. They're different, uh, they're different pockets. No. Yes. We would guarantee your creditor up to $1.399 million. What he wanted to do after that would be up to him. So if you wanted $2 million from him and he was willing to absorb the rest of that, or if our 90% guarantee on the $1.4 million was enough to get you over the line, then you could do that. Those income requirements, we, we just back, we go behind the scenes. You really don't deal with us. Yes, we know exactly how much every year. One thing I wanted to say, Stephanie was talking about the farm storage facility loan. And the way the farm storage facility loan is different than the loans that are up here is there's unlimited money for a farm storage facility loan. 
you can buy a barn, a freezer truck. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of different things. Anything that basically would store or contain a commodity, you can get through Stephanie at any point in time. We have a fixed amount of money in each category for, for New Jersey and then for the rest of the country. When that money is expended, and it's always expended, Congress authorizes X amount. When we, we spend through it, that's it. There is no more money. You get on a list, we would take your loan, we would approve you, you would get on a list, and then the new fiscal year, uh, first or second week of October, new money would come out, and then you would be funded. If you still wanted the loan at that point, you would be funded. We wouldn't, we're not allowed to play favorites. So we can't recommend anything. But what we would do is when you went and got the plans, we would make, we would make sure that any building that we were funding was at, you know, correct, built correctly, had the permits and, and so on. Basically, that's it. That it wasn't, uh, you didn't want to put it up on wetlands, that it was stable, it had a foundation, and so on. And we go out and it's, the, the, uh, the difference with the farm storage facility loan is you have to build the building or the structure or the silo, and we have to inspect it, and then you get the loan. <laughs> yeah, Stephanie didn't tell you that part, did she? <laughs> The other, the other bad news is we only fund 85% of it. You put down 15%. Normally the way it works, you want, a, you want a hay barn, and we do a lot of hay barns. So you want a hay barn. You go to a guy, he gives you the plans. We approve everything. You go through our process. Uh, you build the hay barn. We go out, we inspect the hay barn. You put 15% down. We require you put 15% down. That satisfies the builder to go out and take care of it. And then. Uh, some of the local people anyway can't speak for everybody but they're aware of our program and they will wait until the building is built for for FSA funding and they know that as long as the building is correct and we go out and inspect it we'll just issue the loan and, and that's it you would apply for the program and we would kind of walk you through the process. What we wouldn't do is recommend somebody, but we would walk you through the process. You would put, and normally the 15% is, would satisfy whoever you're. Okay, this was the beginning farmers. Um, no, this is this is the ownership loan. The ownership loan I may have mentioned before is a little unique because we require at least three years of farming experience, some type of farming experience. One year you can substitute for the things down at the bottom here, but the other two years you can't substitute. This is not a, a beginning uh, farmer loan an ownership loan for the most part, unless it's a micro loan. You could buy either a small plot of land or improve uh, land with an ownership loan up to $50,000. And the micro loan, you'd only need that one cycle of farming or you could potentially substitute that one cycle of farming for some of these things here. The ownership loan, you need three years. Yes. Depending on what you wanted to do, it could be on leased land. We would require that you had a lease that spanned the life of the loan. 
once once the loan is paid for obviously your arrangement with the landlord we're not interested in but we would want to make sure that if, through, if, if it was a seven-year term loan for uh, a barn a building and as long as you had control of that ground throughout the loan and the reason for that is in, in most cases that building is going to be the collateral and we reserve the right if something happens with the loan or if it defaults to go out and collect believe it or not to collect the building and mostly that silos and we will dismantle the silo and take it and auction it off so if you don't own the land and something happens uh, the landlord has a right not to let us back on the land I mean it's his it's his property so you would have to have control I don't know if they went over this Saturday or not, but the USDA has a new farmer website. They walk you through a whole, a whole series of things that you need to be aware of, that you, you need to plan for, business plans and so on. It's, um, I don't know if you can see it here. It's got to be, I believe, well, you know what, I think there's a slide. I think it's usda.gov slash new farmers. There it is. One slide too soon. And, uh, if you're interested in farming or you're starting farming or you're a new farmer, that's a great site to start with. Uh, you can come in the office and talk, obviously, uh, either about the programs or the loans. They do little uh, 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 case studies of people that will actually tell you how they got started, what they did, what kind of assistance they needed, how they got it. And additional information Basically, everything is at fsa.usda.gov for our agency, and then NRCS has their, their own site. I think if you go on uh, usda.gov, you can reach just about all the agencies in USDA and, uh, and the sub-agencies, and then there'll be a program link. You can go on the program link, and then it just drills down until you actually get into what you're looking for. It's, it's a pretty good site. And that was loans. Uh, you have any, anybody have any questions about the loans? Do you want to talk about loans or you're, you, you have any other questions, programs or loans? We're right around the corner here. You can just, you can just stop by or call, make an appointment. Okay, thanks.